The second part of this tutorial deals with hardware issues, which is quite an important area because a lot of protocols which had been designed in the past years are actually not feasible from an implementation point of view. I spend a lot of time asking around our hardware specialists in France Telecom R&D and they informed me about the architectures which are feasible. We will hence talk about transparent relaying transceiver architectures and regenerative relaying transceiver architectures and we will also draw some comparison between these two. As for the transparent transceiver design, the most famous protocol is the Amplify and Forward protocol, which basically has a receive antenna where the signal arrives, after which it is bandpass filters so as to eliminate spurious noise, followed by a low noise power amplifier, and that goes to a frequency translator where the frequency is translated by a certain amount delta F. That again is uh, bandpass filtered because the translator usually introduces uh, power spillage, nonlinear operations due to non perfections. That after this is power amplified with a variable gain power amplifier. Again, because the power amplifier is not linear, we will need another bandpass filter after which that is being transmitted from the transmit antenna. Now there are few things to take into account here. First of all, you need very good bandpass filters because if the two bands, the reception and the transmission band, are very close together, there's a good chance that a good, uh, a good amount of power spills over in the adjacent bands and therefore blocks communication in the other band. You also need a good uh, frequency translator and you need a very good variable power gain amplifier, uh, all of which is not very cheap. Since you do not facilitate any storage of the received signal, you can only implement FDMA-like protocols. That means amplify and forward type of protocols can only be done by frequency translation. You cannot do any TDMA-like protocols, which has been assumed in the past, or any other type of protocols like OFDM type, OFDMA type, CDMA type. That is not possible. You need to stick to FDMA. An exception is given after a few slides, which I'll elaborate on. As for the linearly process and forward architecture, you do the same as for the amplify and forward architecture, with the only uh, exception that you insert a linear operations block, which could be something like a phase rotation and a, a little scaling. Um, that is fairly easily realized, but just to remind you again, you cannot do things like with space-time block codes that you use a delay of the signal and then a phase rotation, so an a la multi space-time block code is not implementable like that, but you can implement simple linear operations such as phase rotation to, to facilitate, for instance, beamforming. Again, no storage, hence only FDMA-like protocols. Now, if you do nonlinear processing, and we will dwell on one of the examples later on, if you do nonlinear transparent processing, you'd better do that in the baseband because Usually these type of uh, processes are designed, mathematically designed for baseband process. That is, they do not take the carrier into account. Therefore, usually you need to bring your signal down to baseband. And that, of course, you could also do some INQ branches. You could do some sampled versions of the signal. But generally, if you really do the transparent type of architecture, again, you would not store the signal and hence only facilitate FDMA-like protocols. I mentioned before that uh, TDMA in principle is possible or deviates of that. That means if you have your transparent architecture, you would bring your signal down to baseband. In this example here, you would bring it down to baseband here, split it into the INQ branches. You would do an analog to digital conversion you would do the digital storage and possibly processing and then you would get it back to the digital to analog domain. Again, you do the DQ and DI and you bring it up 
before it is transmitted from the transmit antenna. Now you generally could do that, but it is very unlikely that you would use an architecture like that because once you have your signal in digital domain, you could at almost no extra complexity do some further processing which would deviate from the transparent architecture and hence make that a different type of relaying protocol. Therefore, I believe and we believe and the people who do hardware type of uh, implementations, they believe that uh, if you would like to do TDMA realization, don't do it with transparent architectures such as the amplify and forward. Now as for the regenerative transceiver design, you have two things here. You have the sampled processing architectures, meaning you just deal with the samples, such as the estimation and the compress and forward architectures. What you do is basically, just as before, you bring it down to baseband, you hence have your I and Q branches. You have a sample-based processing, which not necessarily has to be very, very complex. It should include some memory, some data buses, etc. But uh, since you process and, and can store the received signal, you can really deal with any type of protocols. One thing which is important to note here, you need uh, good synchronization methods and very good ADCs and DACs. And the power amplifier usually is cheaper because it is a constant gain power amplifier. So that is a good thing to bear in mind. As for the information bit processing architecture, they go one step further, they actually decode the information, so you have a decode and forward and the purge and forward architectures. Again, you need good frequency translators, good synchronization, good ADC and DAC blocks. You need a fairly powerful baseband, including a microcontroller, again memory and data buses, and you can again implement any type of protocols. Now let's compare these uh, architectures, at least from a higher layer point of view. And what I do here, I list various multiple access schemes such as time division multiple access, frequency division multiple access, code division multiple access, or formal frequency division multiple access, multi-carrier uh, CDMA. And here we have the various uh, forwarding protocols we got in that region here the transparent relaying protocols such as amplify and forward linear process and forward and nonlinear process and in that branch here we got the uh, regenerative protocols such as the simpler one which just deal with the samples of uh, estimate and forward and compress and forward as well as the more complex one such as decode and forward purge and forward and gather and forward and what you can see is that as for the transparent uh, relaying protocols, you can only use them in FDMA type of um, uh, context. The other protocols such as EFCF, etc. can be used theoretically with all types of multiple access schemes, but because they're fairly simple, we expect them to be used with fairly simple access schemes too. So therefore, we believe they will be rather used with pure TDMA and pure FDMA type of multiple access schemes, whereas the uh, more complex forwarding protocols such as DF, PF and GF will be the ones which will be used in the context of CDMA, OFDMA and multi-carrier CDMA. Therefore, all those multiple access schemes which are candidates for 4G communication networks. As for the uh, transceiver complexity, again I have uh, the various forwarding protocols and I compare now the clock accuracy, filter design, the power amplifier, complexity and memory for these type of protocols on a qualitative level really. And um, what we see here is that as for the uh, transparent relaying protocols, the most expensive thing to do is really the filter design because you need to facilitate very very good filters which have a very low power spillage so as not to disturb the relaying communication. It doesn't have any memory and the clock accuracy does not have to be very high, power amplifier does not have to be extremely good and the complexity is also very moderate. 
Now as for the regenerative schemes, we see first that you need to have a very high clock accuracy. Your filter design does not necessarily have to be extremely good because you can realize TDMA type of protocols. Uh, your power amplifier might shall be actually very, very good because you're likely to use these schemes with um, very wideband type of access schemes. Therefore, you need very linear power amplifiers so as not to distort the signal. The complexity also for the purely uh, information-based relaying schemes such as DF, PF, and GF is very high. And the memory requirements can be very high because you may need to store quite a large chunk of relay data. Now that concludes the uh, second part of that tutorial which dealt with hardware issues and we shall move on to channel characterization.